Oh, shit. I'm sorry. take care of our comic books then this is why comic books are precious things they're made of paper they're like origami you know this is I, it's bent and you've ripped out the thing oh no so basically this is a waste of 5.99 that was the cover price of this yeah I mean this is yeah Wow, that was a waste of money, huh? Well, I overall, you know, the waste of money would have been if I continued to have purchased that magazine. I hear. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's probably the best fate for that. It's just that's probably the most care that this ti that title <laughs> will get all year. Uh, hi, <laughs> welcome back. It's time for the DC, um, the Golden Age of DC Comics, three hundred and sixty-five days, where I take this well-loved hardcover coffee table book given to me about two decades ago by one of my best friends. It has been surfing my coffee table ever since, providing me with uh, countless opportunities to have comic book shop style conversations, the kind I wish to recreate right here today with you. So pull up a chair to the coffee table, bring a cuppa, whatever your favorite is. Cheers, slancha. Mmm. All are welcome here. Come to the coffee table with our coffee table book. We're going to use this 365 days book for its intended purpose. We're going to open up to today's date, which is December the 5th. We are going to look at some comic book art of an antediluvian age. We're going to read the blurb, and then we're going to talk about comic books. And we're going to talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year. That's right. Ha ha, thank you so very much for tuning in. The Golden Age of DC Comics runs between 1938 and 1955. The Silver Age between 1956 and 1970. The Bronze Age between 1970 and 1985. And the Copper Age starts in 1985. I get these standards and definitions from the glossary of the Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide. Indeed, this is a 2004 Abrams Press publication written and curated by Chip Kidd, Les Daniels, and Jeff Spear. There is a link to the Amazon page in the description where you can get your own copy. It will look great on your coffee table. You could play along at home, and it makes a great gift for a geek. I know. Also, you can get a used copy, too. I mean, I've given this book a few different lives, and I, I love giving a, an old book a second life and uh, some more love. I love books, and... Um, I hope you love books, too. Thank you. And I hope you're doing awesome, and I hope you're clobbering your problems and not being clobbered by them. Cheers. Um, let's see. It is December the 5th. It's art by Bernard Bailey from Action Comics number 47, April of 1942. I was right. Wait until Tex, er, er, I mean, Mr. America, hears how I beat him to the secret. What the? Is that even art by Bernard Bailey from Action Comics number 47, April of 1942? We have. I'm sorry, trigger warnings if you're, over, if you're sensitive or uh, I, just, I can't keep up with everyone's sensitivities. But it's the character's name is Fat Man. Yes, F A T M A N, Fat Man. And uh, feast your eyes on Fat Man. That's what it says. Feast your eyes on Fat Man. He had a great name, presumably inspired by Batman, but he really wasn't very fat by comic book standards, especially when compared to other comedic sidekicks like Plastic Man's Woozy Winks, Green Lantern's Doiby Dickles, or Wonder Woman's Edit Candy, who I would describe as thick. <laughs> I would. Yeah, I do. Uh, Fat Man was just a chunky, middle-aged guy named Bob Daly who trailed along after Mr. America. His helmet was a lampshade. His cape, a window curtain. His weapon was a broom. Yet in this atmospheric panel, he looks positively poignant. 
Indeed. Fat man on the case. An actual lampshade on the head. Now that was lampshade on the head has significance as a like a as a, a comic um, um, film or or even caricature uh, it has a luggage behind it. No pun. Uh, wearing a lampshade on your head means that you've partied too much. You know, like you know, it's at that point of the night where Dave drank drank a bit too much, and he's being zany, and he put the lampshade on his head, and he's telling stories, and he's you know that that's that has its own luggage. And then comes uh, the he, he has a broom and a squirt gun apparently too. And uh, I, I I even tried to wiki him. He's wikiable. Is there a wiki for, for, for Fat Man, Bob Daly? Robert Bob Daly was Tex Thompson's adventuring a partner for many years. That's from the League of Comics dot com um, description. He has a uh, yeah. He has a uh, there's a DC fandom wiki out there. Yep, and um, also Fat Man. Um, it's the same Fat Man. He uh, he showed up in Batman a few times as da na 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 Fat Man, and in his own Batman costume with bent ears on the cowl, like you know, it, comedic and um, yeah, <laughs> that's great. Fat Man is a ma is a name used mostly by the inept sidekick of Mister America, in his identity. In his civilian identity, he's a friend to the rich oil heir, Tex Thompson, and eventually deciding to assist him as a crime fighter by donning a shoddy homemade costume. And um, the inspiration for his name is that he is fat, but he is also bald. But that does not play into his superhero persona. He first appeared in Action Comics number 2 in 1938. Exactly, because who is Mister America? Mister America was a um, a golden age superhero. Yeah, uh, Tex Thompson, an oil magnate. He first appeared, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, first appeared in Action Comics number one. Harry Tex Thompson is a superhero owned by DC Comics, who later became the masked crime fighter. Mr. America. And then he evolved like a Pikachu could evolve into a Raichu. But uh, Mr. America evolved into the Americamando. <laughs> Indeed. That's great to give him some... Uh, he had this uh, domino mask, uh, a cape, and a whip. And... Um, He's a good-natured American who likes to. He's a, he's independently wealthy and he likes to uh, to solve crimes that he heard or came across. It was a simpler time in the in the golden age. It really was. I mean, <laughs> yeah. There's there's no two ways about it. Just there were simpler stories told to entertain, not infotain. Really, and um, but Fat Man, his uh, his uh, erstwhile. Is this Erst? Am I using Erstwhile correctly? Let me see. Erst. Erstwhile definition, please. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big on like using the right word. Former. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I know it will. It, we have to ask: Is Mister America active? Which Mister America are we using? Because there's been a legacy for Mister America. I've been looking over. My room, I had an issue of Justice Society of America, number one, 2007, uh, where, um, I think it's volume three of the JSA, or Je by Jeff Johns, but there is a, a modern age Mr. America, who is Trey Thompson, a descendant of Tex Thompson, and he gets killed in the next issue, in issue number two, and then his FBI, he's, a, he's an FBI investigator, so his partner finds his secret identity after, you know, post-mortem and then puts on his costume to, uh, to, uh, to honor his fallen, you know, friend and partner. <laughs> yeah. And, um, then there is also, um, Fat Man itself. I mean, Fat Man, I, you know, it's funny cause you know, I've, I mentioned Kevin Smith earlier this week 
and um, how I'm not going to give him a hard time. I'm not. I'm a huge fan of Kevin Smith's work. Um, he's actually showing his movie Clerks 3 tonight um, at the Wang Center in downtown Boston. I wish I could go. I went to uh, Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, and that was fun because I got to see Kevin Smith and Jay Moose on on the stage. I, I really like them. I like his movies. I like the characters. Um, I don't I choose not to have a problem with Kevin Smith. Let's put it that way. Um, Because I think, you know, there's dogpiling, there's picking on people. There's like just, I say outrageous shit all the time too. Um, But, you know, I'm just consistent and so is Kevin. And he's also changed, you know, people change. They do. Um, He had a massive heart attack a few years back. And... He knows he's not supposed to be here. So he's over emotional about stuff. So yeah, he does those he's trying you know, like, you know, I'm crying at something again. Yeah, sure. I mean it's 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 part of his new shtick. I mean that's it's it. He lost a lot of weight. Under his daughter's um suggestion and tutelage, became a vegan after this heart attack. And he's literally n- silent Bob and you know, Kevin Smith used to be associated with you know, he called himself Fat Man. And um, he has, that was his, like, he's got the Fat Man podcast, and it's, it's pretty funny. And um, so now, but in perfect Batman tradition, because Kevin Smith, we all know, is a huge Batman fan, he called, now he's called Fat Man Beyond, which is funny because he's lost all that weight. He's like very, he's skinny now and healthy. He's like, He's got his own body positivity that includes wellness and, and and proper diet and weight management, knowing that all that heft you know helped contribute to his you know his lifestyles and his smoking and all, you know all this like I have it too. I mean, geez, I'm no, I'm not like you know good on you that you were able to do that. Quitting cigarettes is hard, man. I did that too. I have a, actually a cute comic book story about that. I've shared it before. I'll share it again. Why not? It's about storytelling. It's about conversations. I quit smoking. I was a 13-year pack-a-day or more smoker uh, from the age of about 20 to about 33. And or maybe like 19 to 32 or something, something like that. Yeah. And this was by bargain. Back then, the cigarettes were going for about 5 to $6 a pack. And so that's at least seven packs of cigarettes a week. So that's between $35 and $42 a week. And I gave my... And this is when I was coming back to comic books. When I came back to comics in 2000, 2001, um, specifically with Grant Morrison's New X-Men and Judd Winnick's Green Lantern. I loved those two comics. Those were really nice comics and... You know, Errol Banks art, Green Lantern, turn me on to Chuck Winnick. He was a pretty good comic book writer. He's, and um, in my humble opinion, yeah, he wrote good, solid superhero stories. And uh, so I made a bargain for quitting cigarettes uh, that I could spend up 35 to $42 a week on comics, trade paperbacks, Anything at the comic book store. Yeah, that was my bargain. And I haven't had a drag of a cigarette since. Not a, not a one, not a drag. I still have dreams about cigarettes, of having cigarettes. I can smell them on my fingertips when I wake up and I feel guilty. Yes, I'm an erstwhile smoker. Cigarette smoker. Yeah, I, you know, it's... Weed has been legalized in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and taxed. So, uh... <laughs> that is an entirely different story. <laughs> As the Blues Brothers said in that song, you know I gave up cigarettes for my New Year's resolution, but I didn't give up smoking. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Well, let's look at our what's on our notes here today. Oh yeah, so yeah, Judgment Day, huh? Sorry, I mean, but yeah, it was a, it wasn't. That's I, that busted. Yeah, these are. Yeah, I, I had this not properly bagged, boarded. Or put away. I mean, it's like 
Uh, it's, it's not worth it, to be honest. Uh, it was six bucks, and this was like a, a limited series that was the spine of other crossings, like say between X Men, Avengers, and the Eternals. So this is like a like a a, a three sided fight or something that I heard does. It's, I, I I watch all these shows, all, all these YouTube shows. I'm part of a YouTube community, and. Um, it's and it didn't change anything. Nothing really happens, and it was just boring story beats for six issues or so, four or six issues, at the cost of six dollars an issue. I mean, seriously. I mean, so what's a six times six is thirty six. That's thirty six dollars, you know, just from from one person. Yeah, and I mean, the art's fine. I mean, I'm not bagging on, like, the, you know, but I'm, what I I'm, am bagging on, bagging on, that's funny. I, I Sometimes I'm unintentionally punny, because this is what happens when you don't properly take care of your, your funny books. I mean, they're fragile things. These are, that's, that came off. I'm not trying to aggravate the, uh, the, the, pre, uh, the, the, the. The other is staple, but yeah, these are these are magazines. This is paper. This is bound by a staple. These are these are they're printed like this, and then they're folded, and then they're stapled together in the, the, these pages. You know, here we go. Yeah, these these are you know, not. This is not the trade paperback. This is not the collection. Um, this is the episode. This is the monthly. This is the serial. And uh, these used to be on spinner racks and on newsstands and used to be available to children at eye level with their pocket change. Yeah. Along the way, publishing has changed. Yeah, publishing has changed. The marketplace has changed. I mean, it's interesting, though. You know, try to sell a digital copy of this uh, on release day for the same amount as a physical copy. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's like, that doesn't make sense. I mean, if the, you know, this does this come with it? This comes with a digital copy. Yeah, that that's cool. I mean, yeah, there's a QR. There must be. There's a QR code for everything these days. I'll find it. But it wasn't really, yeah, no sight. You know, I do appreciate like it's something like this. The dramatis personae, as Chris Claremont, you know, so eloquently informed me. In previous, in issues of Uncanny X-Men past, you know. Yeah, look at that. That's the X-Men team right now. Who are these people? Exactly. What's, what's Magneto doing with the X-Men? Exactly. You know, it's all good. <laughs> and uh, who are the Eternals? They just had a movie, right? Yeah, uh huh And um, those are our Avengers. Yeah, uh huh Yeah, but I did not properly take care of this magazine. It has lost its resale value. It, it, it's like it. I would not be able to sell this for more uh, for, for for even what I paid for it. I couldn't sell this for six dollars. I couldn't resell this for six dollars. It's not worth it. This is you know, this is and this is why we need to bag and board our comic books and put them into long boxes and store them properly and uh, and take care of them. You know, I I jokingly say too, like you know. I'm going to, like this comic here, I probably rolled up just like this. And I put it in my back pocket. Like this. I'm not going to show you my shorts. Um, I got Hawaiian shorts on. I do. It's, 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 a, little, it's a beautiful day. I got the windows open. <laughs> but yeah, this, this comic book right now is rolled up and into my back pocket. And this horrifies comic book people i've done, i've horrified comic book people with this like at the, the store and or even online here I'm, I'm pretty sure i horrified gary from nerdrotic with that once on a member stream a couple of years ago i didn't mean to sorry ben sorry boss uh, <laughs> but seriously i mean that's what i would do with them as a kid that gives me joy to spend my change on 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 a comic book from the spinner rack and i would just like you know where would you hold it i mean you're on the go. You roll it up. You put it in your back pocket. Now they're sacred relics. Back then they were just they were just funny books. 
you know, and they still are just funny books and they should be fun. And um, this was not so fun. So, but still all the same, I need to take better care of my, my comic books. I was just going through uh, trying to find that, that I had that issue of Justice Society of America, number one, 2007, with Mr. America's reveal at the last page. And I was going to show it. Be like, hey, look, the perpetuation of legacy characters, even, you know, going closer to today and especially into the 21st century. Yet I couldn't find it. I know it's around here somewhere. It is in a bag. I know that much. I will find it. Because there is a newer Justice Society number one that came out last week. We're going to talk about that too. Next time we see the JSA, I'll find that issue. But yeah, I'm going to stop bothering this issue. Like, I could care less, you know, about this. It's a Marvel comic book. I'm not thrilled with Marvel much anymore. And um, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much. We've been talking about comic books. And we're going to talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year. You got it. Thank you so much. Tune in tomorrow, 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern. And we'll find out who we're talking about when we turn the page tomorrow. Turn on those notifications. And you will eventually learn how to tell time. I guarantee it. Thank you so very much. Like and subscribe. God bless. Namaste. I would love to earn your subscription. So tune in. Thank you so much. We will see you again tomorrow in those funny pages. Ciao. Bye-bye.